and welcome to another booktube video from me Lauren from Lauren and the Books. I hope you're all very well. Oh, filming this on the 1st of January. So much promise this year's got, hasn't it? So much promise. Today's video, speaking of January, is my January TBR. So I'm going to be talking about the books that I plan to read in the month of January, along with a few sort of like little reading plans I've got through the year. Now there will be a full video on my reading plans and my reading resolutions, etc. Maybe the next video? Who knows? There will be. Um, but today I'm just going to be talking about my TBR for the month of January. Now, if you are interested in following um, what I read on more of a sort of live basis, I do a reading wrap up at the end of every month um, where I talk about the books that I've read in a video here. Sometimes I even do two. If I've read loads, I, I do one halfway through the month. Um, but I also um, review every book that I read on my Instagram, um, on my Instagram stories. It's just a short little um, review. So if you're watching here, you get a much more in-depth review. But if you're fancying, oh, yeah, I'd like to see what she's reading as it goes, um, head on over to my Instagram. You can follow me there. At Lauren and the books I am. I'll put all the um, details down below. But yeah, let's talk about uh, the books that I'm reading in January. Oh, David's making a right old racket in the kitchen, isn't he? He's cooking us a Linda McCartney fake chicken bucket with some cornbread that he made yesterday for lunch. And he's, he's a bit hangry, so I'm quite looking forward to him eating it, actually. Right, so let's talk about the books that I'm reading. So um, this month, January, is normally a month where I read new books that I've been given for Christmas or uh, for my birthday, because my birthday's at the end of November, um, and then I have uh, December where I read Christmassy books, um, and then Christmas is at the end of that book. So I'm, I'm reading some new books that I've got, um, but not just new books that I've got, like other books that I've been very much looking forward to. Um, so let's talk with, start with some of the new books that I've got to read. So King, Kim Jeong, born 1982 by Cho Nam Due. Um, this was uh, gift uh, gifted. It was given to me for my birthday by my friend Emma. Um, it's translated from Korean and it's about a, um, a young girl who is born at the end of the 20th century and raises questions about endemic misogyny and institutional oppression that are relevant to us all. So yeah, and I've heard really good things about it. And actually, when I hold it, a lot of people said, oh, that's a really, really great book. I think you'll have a really good, lovely time with that. So yes, very much looking forward to reading that. Then I've got Run Rebel by Manji Mann. Um, now, I was a guest on the Quick Book Reviews podcast um, for their Christmas episode. Um, and Philippa, who runs that podcast, very good podcast, by the way, um, you should go and search for it in wherever you listen to your podcast quick book reviews it's called um and uh, she gifted me um this as a thank you for um for for appearing on the 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 podcast so i was very very delighted about that and she she was so sweet as well because she picked out books that she thought i'd really enjoy and this was one of them um and it's a book written in verse about a young girl amber who's trapped by her father's rules by his expectations by her own fears now she's ready to fight for her mother for her sister for herself freedom always comes at a price and it says here that it's a trailblazing verse novel that thunders with rhythm heart and soul and i really enjoy uh, verse novels i've read quite a lot of verse novels um and this sounds amazing so yeah looking forward to reading that as well i get through verse novels i'm sure i'm not the only person saying this but i when like because there's not much text always on the page i get through them quite quickly but that one's only got like four lines on the page so yeah i'm really looking forward to to getting into that now the next one is a book that um, Jen bought me for my birthday and that's In the Kitchen, Essays on Food and Life um, and I've been really really looking forward to, to reading this. This has got a whole host of essays about food. I love reading food fiction and books about food, non-fiction about food, things like that. So when this came out at the end, of, uh, t towards the end of last year I was like oh I must have that and Jen was kind enough to buy it for my birthday. It's got essays from all sorts of people in here, um, people that I'm familiar with such as Ruby Tando, um, Daisy Johnson, um, there was somebody else um, that I was familiar of and then people that I'm not so familiar of um, and they're, they're set into like, the essays are set into separate like parts so come into the kitchen reading and writing in the kitchen and beyond the kitchen and some of these essays have um uh, titles such as food is a bridge to community i mean that sounds amazing against roast chicken and hors d'oeuvres theory of cooking the new thing cupboard of love uh, the future of food yeah so i'm really really looking forward to, to to get into that um and that was actually one of the picks so for my patreon book club i'll talk about that a bit later because that's obviously on my TBR, um, but the genre, uh, the genre for January's books was um, food, um, and this was one of them. It didn't win, but I still want to read it because I'm really excited. Um, then I've got a book that was sent to me by the publisher. This is Stronger by Purna Bell. It's not actually out until um, April, um, but this is about um, Purna and her um, her her beginning um, a hobby and eventually a career in competitive. Um, 
powerlifting um, following the sudden death of her husband. So it's all about being strong in terms of being mentally strong and also being physically strong. And it just sounds amazing. The tagline that goes with this is changing everything I knew about women's strength. Um, and um, she goes into details about, it says here, um, Purna centers the stories of a diverse range of women investigating intersections of race, age, and social background, part memoir, part manifesto, stronger explodes old fashioned notions and long held beliefs about getting strong and explores the relationship between mental and physical strength. Now, I am not strong. I've got no upper body strength. I have to get David to open jars for me. And I was thinking about this when I received this book and I was thinking like, I really need to start thinking about building up some strength. And I really think that this is gonna inspire me. The fact that it's part memoir and part manifesto, I'm all into that. You alright, David? Yeah. He's just talking to Minnie, I think. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna be reading that as well. Um, and then the last one of sort of books that I just want to read because I've received recently is this picture book of Coming to England by Floella Benjamin. Um, and then the illustrations are done by Diane Ewan. It looks amazing. So this is um, the true story. It's uh, uh, celebrating the Windrush generation. Uh, the, the book itself was written by Floella Benjamin and this is an illustrated version of it. The illustrations look absolutely beautiful and just full of colour colour and just love and loveliness. Look at this one with the green on it. Um, and I can't wait to read this. Um, and actually this sort of leads into um, my next set of books that I'm going to be reading. So um, I'm going to be taking part in the Reading Women Challenge this year and I'll link the website down below. Um, this is a challenge I've always kept an eye on previously but never, never taken part in. Um, and it's an amazing, amazing set of prompts for you to read throughout 2021. Uh, they do this every year, Kendra does this every year. And um, this year I, I just, I looked at the prompts, I mean every year I look at the prompts I think oh they're amazing but this year I was like that they are amazing and I can't wait to take part so Mercedes and I all being well at some point are going to do a live show be it here on my channel or on Mercedes channel where we're going to talk about our plans and what we plan to read for each of the prompts there's 24 prompts with four bonus prompts so 28 in total um so Mercedes and I will be doing a live show about that we need to come to the details of when we're going to do that because we're both bloody useless. Um, so yeah, I'll, um, I'll I'll get onto Mercedes and we'll get a date set and you can you, I'll let you know on here and on Instagram and stuff when it'll be. I'm sure Mercedes will do the same. Um, but yeah, so so there's 28 prompts and and, and the, some of the reading I want to do in January. I'm trying to do three of the prompts a month because I don't. I mean, some of these prompts I'm going to do without even realising, um, uh, as is this one. But I I don't want to. Well, I mean, I do, I, I do sort of want to like do it all at the beginning of the year, but also I want to sort of like pace myself. So I've, I've picked sort of like three prompts a month to do, um, and also there's the, like I said, the bonus prompts. So try and get onto one of the bonus prompts. So the first, uh, so one of the first ones is, and I've got two books for this. So if I read two of them, then I've done two books for that prompt. Um, and one of them is a cover, um, a, a cover of a book designed by a woman um, and this one is because it's done by Diane Ewan um, and I like I said sometimes there's going to be books that I'm not even going to realise that are part of the Reading Women Challenge until I look more into it and then I was like oh yeah that one does as well but the book I actually had picked out for that was The Tea Dragon Society which is written and illustrated by Katie O'Neill so this is um, her, the, the the design of this is done by a woman as well. Um, this book I saw on Jen's channel, she talked about how much she loved it. It's one of her favorite books of the year. It's a graphic novel about tea dragons and about their powers and things like that. It looks like it's gonna be so, so beautiful. I'm really looking forward to it. It's set into seasons, which is something else I really, really, really like seasonal reading and the illustrations are done seasonally and I just think it's gonna be beautiful. And there's a series of this. I believe the second one's out at the moment. Um, I'm not sure when the third one's out, but yeah, very excited about that. So that's for one of the Reading Women's Proms. Then also I've got, uh, this is a um, uh, this is a proof copy of Ramesha by Radia Hafisa. This is a collection of um, fairy tales, re like put on a modern spin um, and reimagined. So um, Ramesha is Rapunzel um, and the tagline here is Ramesha, Ramesha, let down your hijab. Um, Cinderella instead of Cinderella and Sleeping Sara instead of Sleeping Beauty. Um, so yeah, and the prompt that I'm reading this for is it a Muslim middle grade novel um so yeah so although this is a this counts did it I've just realized it's a collection of short stories but I think it is like I think this counts this isn't out until April 2021 um and I'm really looking forward to reading it so then I've got um some because I've been using Libby on my e-reader this is never beautiful to look at is it um but let me open open it um 
and I've been using the Libby app and I've been putting like loads of reservations on and like getting books out and stuff like that so that I've got them ready and I've made like a little tag because you can tag books on Libby um, and I've made like a reading women uh, folder where I'm putting books in there that will go through some of the challenges and stuff so um, the first one I've got which is actually due back in nine days so I need to get a wiggle on because I'm halfway through another book like I said I'm filming this on the 1st of January so I mean there is every chance I'll be able to read it if not I just have to renew it it doesn't look as though anyone else wants it anyway that book is the kiss quotient by helen huang and the um the prompt behind that is a neurodivergent author um which helen huang is and this book um the, the kiss quotient is a, it sounds a little bit like i read the rosie project like many many years ago and i believe that the guy who wrote that whose name i've bloody forgotten he is also neurodivergent um anyway um the kiss quotient is about a woman um i think her name's stella and she is it's a romance book and she's trying to find uh, she, she works in sort of like algorithms and setting up algorithms for for like um help to 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 get people to buy stuff and things like that and she sets up an algorithm behind falling in love or getting a boyfriend or having a kiss or something like that apparently it's super steamy um and uh, that's when i was looking at the reviews of it um everyone was like oh this was really steamy oh this was really steamy so yeah so i've got that for nine days so i'm hoping to be able to read that before it's due back as i said i'm in the middle of a few things at the moment and then the last one so um as well as the 24 prompts there's also four bonus authors um that you can read uh, if you read a book for, of one of those authors um you will get a bonus point and i've got out uh, at the moment a book called This Mournable Body, where is it, by Titsitsi Dangarimba um, and I'm not actually sure what it's about and I haven't got my phone here so I can't google it um, but yeah I'd never heard of this uh, this um, this author before um, but yeah I'm going to be reading uh, This Mournable Body, that's due back in 13 days so I need to get a wiggle on with that so um, yeah so that's the reading I've got planned for January for the Reading Women 2021 challenge, as I said Mercedes and I are going to do a live show about that where we talk about the books um, so yeah keep an eye on both of our channels, I don't know who's going to be doing it on whose channel but we're going to be talking about that um, and then lastly my last bit of reading for January is for my book clubs um, so uh, my first uh, book that I'm going to be I'm going to listen to the audiobook of this and it's The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary, this is for my book club with my um, Facebook friends um, and uh, we're going to be, yeah, I'm going to be listening to this. Now I, I read The Switch by Beth O'Leary, well again I listened to the audiobook of uh, The Switch by Beth O'Leary earlier this year um, and really enjoyed it like I, I keep saying, oh um, women's contemporary fiction and romance really isn't my thing but I've really read probably more women's contemporary fiction and romance this year than I've read since I started booktube, I'm absolutely certain of it um, and yeah, so I read, uh, the, uh, listened to The Switch, really enjoyed it, the reason I listened to it is because um, it had the the actor who, oh, I've forgotten her name Daisy Edgar Jones, who played uh, Marianne in Normal People, she narrated it, as did Alison Steadman, who's Pamela in Gavin and Stacey. So that's what drew me to um, the switch. And then The Flat Share, which was her debut novel, I believe, um, is about two people who are sharing the same um, house um, and the same bed. One of them works nights and one of them works days and they share the same flat to save money i don't think they've ever met um and it's uh yeah women's contemporary fiction so i'm interested just having enjoyed the switch quite looking forward to um to to read uh the flat share i forgot what it's called then and then lastly you're right david yeah minnie's just been mad isn't she she's, been mad she's got today. a lot of energy today no, she's yeah. got a lot of energy um and then the last book is the book that i'm going to be reading for my patreon book club and that's supper club by lara williams um i'm really looking forward to reading this as well this is about a 29 year old roberta who spent her whole life hungry until the day she invents supper club and it's a secret society for hungry women each woman comes with her own reasons carrying her own damages and needs her own erasures and erosions they come seeking transcendence they come seeking themselves they gather after dark and feast until they are sick and month by month their bodies expand at their centre stands Roberta, cynical yet anxious precocious and lost, searching for the answer to a simple question, if you feed a starving woman what will she grow into? So this is what we're going to be reading for my Patreon book club which is on the 31st of January we, we read um, uh, we, we, we read the book as the month goes on and then discuss it on the last Sunday of every month at 7pm GMT or BST, whatever my time zone is. And uh, yeah, we have a lovely time doing that and I really, really enjoy it. So I will leave details down below if you'd like to, to do, to, to join the Patreon book club. Um, and um, I'm gonna be putting out the, uh, the, the, uh, we pick like a month in advance so I pick a genre give uh, the Patreons um, two books to pick from um, that poll goes on the Patreon feed and you get to vote for that so this week uh, because I always do it the first week of every month I'll be putting up the um, the poll for the genre and the books that we're going to be reading in February um, so yeah if that's something you might like to join then 
come along and join us be happy to have you so yeah those are the books that i plan on reading in january um really looking forward to uh, january's reading always feel really pumped about i mean i feel pumped about reading throughout the year but the beginning of the year i always feel excited got a new notebook writing all my stuff down um yeah so yeah let me know what you're planning on reading in the month of january and i'll see you all again soon for another booktube video goodbye